everybody, welcome back to Umi Neko. The last time we left off, well, we had the unfortunate deaths of Kirie, Rudolph, and Hideyoshi. Then George went flying through the air with Beatrice. And lastly, Evatrice sent some sort of presence in the garden. But before we start today's episode, we have another wonderful piece of artwork to showcase here on the channel. And today's artwork is not Loratrice related, but it is Lorelai related. And in case you didn't know, I am Lorelai and uh, welcome to my channel. Today's artwork is by Naizo. Thank you to Naizo and Full of Madness for letting me know. Naizo has done extremely wonderful, cute art of me. And I really love the attention to details, especially with the oink there, because we are now oinkers. We are not just space cats. And I mean both you and me, we are space pigs. Yeah, that's why we're oinking. And I really like the stars there because on my own model, I think it's kind of hard to see the stars. But here, it's super noticeable and I really like that. But once again, please check out and shower Nizo with love. That's N-I-A-Z-0 on Tumblr. Please give them love. And now back to our regularly scheduled Uminiko content. Lately, the cliffhangers has been have been really strong. Real magic. Huh. The guest house lobby had been engulfed by silence. The strings of tension which bound Kraus, Natsuki, and Eva had already loosened. They were completely tired, and their consciousness was beginning to waver. Every once in a while, they would stand up and walk around pointlessly, fighting their drowsiness. Are they just gonna forget about Nanjo? She spoke a brave line, but she couldn't hide her rough breathing. Yeah, she is really... She's really brave right now and courageous to, to be acting this way even though she's clearly not feeling well. But I guess it's also because George, her son, is still in this guest house. Well, he's not in this guest house anymore, but she wants to protect him, I think. It seemed that the fever, which had been calmed with medicine for a long time, had returned. It was very obvious that Eva's condition was not good. <sighs> it seemed that she had now become stubborn. Charles and Natsuhi realized that no matter what else they said to her, in her current state, wouldn't reach her ears. Yeah, and she just lost Hideyoshi too. So they decided to say nothing more and to let her be. Eva right now, even an argument like that was putting a burden on her. It would probably be better for her if she just sat there with her mouth closed. As a matter of fact, Eva was already on the point of succumbing to her drowsiness. She might have talked back with a temper because she was trying to encourage herself and throw off her sleepiness. The clock would very soon be pointing to 6 in the afternoon. Because she had been snacking over and over again to fool her drowsiness, she didn't feel hungry. But instead, her lack of sleep made it feel like it was 6 in the morning rather than the afternoon. Even supposing that the boat would come at precisely 9 in the morning tomorrow, there was still more than 12 full hours to go. That was a dizzyingly long stretch of time. Long. Painful. I don't like this. But... Even the sound of the clock torments my body now. But why did we switch to... this scene? In times like this, 
He would put his hand on my forehead, and the fever would always fade at once. But he isn't here anymore. Oh, <laughs> I'm gonna tear up! As Eva's mind grew foggy, she was once again gripped by a deep sadness. She had already cried herself dry. Even so, the sadness from losing her beloved husband had not been exhausted. What does she mean? Originally, the new witch had been the same being as Eva. If Eva talked to her, she would always respond. あの黄金の山を見たとたんに欲が増えたの。あの黄金の山を一人占めしたい気持ちに駆られた。うん、あなたは私の少女時代の心であると同時に自分勝手でしかない私の横島な心でもあったそのあなたがあの黄金の山によって芽生えた私の愚かな欲望のせいで私の胸という卵の殻を破り I don't really understand how this witch can be born out of Eva. And if magic does not exist whatsoever, then is this really Eva? No, no. I was Rosa and Maria. そして、ルドルフとキリエとヒデヨシもあなたの責任ってことになるわ。どうしてうちの人まで殺したのよ。どうして。ひでよしを殺す気はなかったわ。だって、うるさくてしつこかったんだもの。<笑> その意味では私たちの… <笑> 気分の謎を解いたわ。そして黄金を見つけ、当主の指輪を手にしたわ。全ての夢を叶えきったわ。それがなんで不満なの？それだけが全ての夢なんかじゃないわ。あの人と素敵な人生を歩んで常時に素
白宮エヴァなのにいいえもう違うわそしてそれはあなたが言ったのよ私は後ろ宮エヴァそしてあなたは黄金の魔女ベアトリーチェよだからもう消えて魔女なんておとぎ話の中にしか存在できない妄想よ幻想よあなたなんか消えてしまえ二度と私の前に現れないでああそう分かったわあなたの前から消えてあげるわそして私はもう後ろ宮エヴァじゃないこれからは黄金の魔女ベアトリーチェよもう好き勝手に遊んでやるんだからあんたなんて知らないわへそでもかんで勝手に死んじゃえばあっ having a fittingly childlike tantrum The witch who had once been another Eva vanished. Only Eva was left behind in the darkness, and she questioned herself. I am not. I am not. I am not. Really giving me that kind of vibe.、Uh, I don't want to say that Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde is not entirely like that, but it's really like she has a split. Personality, and I wonder if it could be something like that. Now, that question was one she herself would never answer. It seemed that half a sleeve she had gotten some saliva caught in her windpipe just as she was dozing off. Eva suddenly started coughing. Eva pushed away Natsuhi's hand as she tried to wrap her back and then steadily rose to her feet. I don't have a good feeling. Extra strong coffee that no one likes except for George and Eva. Um, <laughs> Eva exited the lobby heading for the heading for the lavatory. Krause and Natsuhi watched over her frail back. Yeah, I was about to say that too. Surprising that Krause has a heart sometimes. Yeah, so did it tell us she told me. What a serious face. Ludolf any more rose any more. Ah, what a singer star near a sea cotto to Yeba. So they were all hey, Nicotori. Carrera, we met a docket. Am I just feeling very emotional? <laughs> that tear is coming to my eyes because Krauss is having his own character development right now. He's actually self aware that he's been kind of a shit brother. His siblings. I'm kind of surprised. Stichinoyonitakutu. It's just kind of sad that 
they have to be put into this kind of situations to realize this? Or maybe he has already realized it long before, but it's only now that he finally is acting on his on his feelings towards his siblings. And he doesn't want to bully them, but instead be a good brother that he could never be before. But it just sucks that he has to wait until now to happen. エヴァ。まだ傷が癒えぬほどに深い心の傷を負わせてしまっただろう。悔いているが、今更それを詫びたところで、その傷が癒えるわけもない。あなたがその気持ちを今だけでなく持ち続けることで、その気持ちはきっ
The gold snake began to drag Krasa Natsuhi's corpses back. It slipped through the door to the corridor, dragging the corpses, gradually increasing in speed. And in a blink of an eye, it had pulled them outside the guest house. So the lobby was still, as though nothing had happened at all. So no blood at all? As though Krause and Atsuhi had never been there to begin with. Only a sound of the wind and the rain remained, as though feigning ignorance and pretending that they had been the only ones there. It's just awfully good timing that Eva wasn't around. Eva returned from the lavatory, but no one was in the lobby. Even though they had been so far until the very moment she had choked and gone to the lavatory, they had now gone as if they had been an illusion from the beginning. Is this all Eva's delusion? Like she was pretending to be in a detective novel, Eva put her hand on the sofa. She felt a warmth indicating that they had been sitting there until a short while ago. Maybe they had gone to do the rounds or something. For the time being, Eva sat down and waited for their return. No. <laughs> what about the presence that Evatrice detected though? Vieto and George could be seen in the parlor of the mansion. George was kneeling near Shannon's body as though praying. His face was sincerity itself, and there was even sweat on his forehead. However, Biotel was the same. Now that she had handed her name over, most of her previous power had been lost. Of course, she still had more than enough power to be called a witch, but compared to the past, it was a very faint thing. <laughs> George maintained a single-minded focus. He kept frantically yelling inside his heart, trying to call back the soul of the person he loved. He strongly envisioned his soul leaving his body and searching for her as she wandered through hell. Vieto turned that strong force into magical power, supplementing her own magic. It was magic that, in the past, she could have performed easily without anyone's help. But now, if she didn't rely on someone's help, she wouldn't be able to finish a chant, much less succeed. This is a cute face of hers. An even more strained expression than George's had risen to Beato's face. She was still forgetting this, but the magic to revive a life is fundamentally the ultimate hidden art. It was her previous magical power giving her the ability to use that magic over and over with a snap of her fingers that was abnormal. Therefore, the heavy burden to her body and mind was, by rights, absolutely to be expected. The strong power pouring from George was even large enough to pass as magical power. At first, Yoto thought it was due to the blood of the mage Kinzo. However, that was probably wrong. She had a feeling that Battler had taught her that. George's power to feel sorrow for the death of his loved one arose from the way he had tried his hardest throughout his life, from the warm time he spent together with Shannon, and from the size of their shared dream promising each other their futures. Do humans really live this seriously during their one single life? Of course they do. 
To her, a life didn't mean anything more than the difference between the top and bottom of an Othello piece. If the black represented death, then she thought all you had to do was flip it over again and make it white. However, it was just like that broken base. The humans in the world without magic, where they can never return it to its original form, it is very, very natural for them that all your body and soul on that single life. <laughs> Now, the witch acknowledged it. He was able to hold a magical power that could not reside in witches who didn't understand the value of a life. What is this thing called the endless magic for? Again, for humans, right? Even though I call myself the endless witch, have I been forgetting what the endless magic means for a whole thousand years? She looked at George's expression again. His surging, earnestness was like a lightning bolt. Right now, even if George's body was burned or smashed by a waterfall, he would probably continue to pray for his beloved without minding it, without noticing it. For the first time, she showed respect for that power. So in that instant, all magical resistance was lost, and the enormous power of George's feelings turned into magical power in its perfect form. Oh? Oh? The vase was very, very beautiful, rich with history and value. Even as young as I was, it still forced me to take a deep breath when I witnessed its beauty. But that just made me want to touch it. But the vase fell easily and smashed into smithereens, like a popped bottle. Bubble! <laughs> It felt as though the time when it had possessed a form was just an illusion. It was that fragile, that easily lost, that life. I realized that because of my own foolish curiosity, I had done something that couldn't be taken back. No matter how much I regretted it, no matter how much I apologized, a broken vase would not return to its original form. A lost life will not return to normal, no matter what happens. I was frightened by the fact that my own frivolous action, even though it had been frivolous, had stolen a life that could never be revived again. I know she's talking about the vase, but I called it a life here. Or is she making a connection to George's or to, well, all the deaths that she has caused before? And out of pity for the lost life, I cried. Out of fear of myself, who had made it become lost, I cried even more. I was sure that Grandfather would also cry at the loss of his precious vase. I was sure that all of the people who thought fondly of Grandfather would cry too when they saw him like that. By just the loss of a single life, the whole world would be filled with so much sadness. I cried even more at how terrible that would be. Beatrice appeared and spoke. ならばお嬢様、この壺を魔法で蘇らせましょう。それで皆が幸せになれるなら、壺も魔法も精霊たちも喜んでそのために力を貸し。もうさあさ、お嬢様、目を閉じて私と一緒にお歌を歌いましょ
that's the spell that she used to revive or to repair the vase, but eventually the vase would break again. So wouldn't Shannon just die again? Her previous magic had powerfully knocked on a door to Hades in the same way. However, back then, it was horribly violent and earned the displeasure of the peacefully sleeping dead. However, this time was different. It was very powerful, but it was very kind and loving. Oh! The dead near the door opened their eyes and called out to the other dead that there was a voice calling for someone to come back. I just can't believe there's actually some place out here. The sadness of that voice calling from the outside touched the hearts of the dead. And trying to respond as quickly as possible, they searched for Shannon's lost soul. I have goosebumps. Will Shannon appear? And then, they found it. They found a casket in which Shannon was peacefully sleeping. It truly was Shannon's soul, sleeping in the land of the dead. Inside a casket that was covered with rose petals frozen with frost, she was sleeping in peace. The dead silently lifted that casket up. While it looked like a funeral march at a glance, it had the complete opposite meaning. It was solemn, but filled with joy. It reminded the long-forgotten dead that they continued to be loved even after their death. <laughs> I'm gonna cry! And gave them all a warm sense of peace. Then, as though guided by a warm light from the heavens, Jenna's body floated up out of the casket. The dead watched her go. They squinted at that warm light giving their respect to this unknown member of the living who had continued to hold on to his love for a person even after her death. I didn't expect it, and I didn't expect it to hit so hard. Venna's body was sucked into the light in the heavens and began to disappear. In the jet black darkness of the land of the dead, the faint flickering of gold butterflies could be seen. It reminded them of the gentle stars in the night sky, which they had long forgotten. <coughs> George remembered being told that he must not say anything, and he hurriedly covered his mouth. However, it felt like his heart was trying to jump out of his throat. Because he had seen Shannon's eyelids shake slightly. And then, those eyelids slowly opened. Shannon's eyes were there, but they were still covered in the frost of the land of the dead. However, the warmth of the human world, no, the warmth of her loved one, who had called her soul back, slowly dissolved that frost, and her eyes gradually regained their sparkle. Then her eyes moved and recognized George. George. Oh my god. He's actually alive! As her lips shook weakly, Janet definitely said that. The words were very faint. So much so that it normally wouldn't even have reached his ears. However, George clearly hurt them. He hurt his loved one, his fiance, the one he loved most who should have been dead. Call his name once again. Shano, Shano, Bokuka, Wakarukai. George, son, Korea, Humanano. As George said that, he softly pinched Shannon's cheek. 
It was how George had always responded in the past when Shannon had been surprised by something and had asked if she was dreaming. When Shannon felt the warm touch of George's finger on her cheek, and when George realized that the warmth of a living person had already returned to the cheek of his beloved, they both cried. With what words should a pair of lovers separated by death celebrate their reunion? The words of the human world are not enough to celebrate that. In short, they had no need of the words of this world. Janet sat up, and the two of them simply wordlessly hugged each other. Janet still didn't have much strength in her, and putting her arms around George's back took all she had. But George hugged her tightly to make up for that. Stop her from ever going to a place beyond his reach. He hugged her so tightly, and yet so gently. Jenna's fingers curled around George's back. And on her ring finger indeed, shone the engagement ring George had given her. That strong sparkle was absolutely not the sparkle of diamond alone. There was, without doubt, a magical power there that only the two lovers could possibly feel. It was because that strong light existed that they had been able to find her casket in the land of the dead. Yeto understood. That ring, no. The couple's feelings in the form of that ring had created this miracle. In that moment, George had definitely used magic. Yeto had done nothing more than help him along. That magic had a magical power that only that could only reside in those who knew of the importance of life and trying their hardest. It was a power of a miracle that an endless witch could not know, that only the power of the finite could give rise to. By now, she had no choice but to accept it. She had to accept that true magic, true magical power, existed in a place farthest away from she who called herself a great witch. ベアトリッチ様。彼女が君を生き返らせてくれたんだ。ありがとう、ベアトリッチ。いや。我らは何もできなかった。シャノを蘇らせたのは。そなたの魔力。そなたの魔法。奇跡を成し遂げる後ろ
Yuto, who was leaning her back against the wall, let down the wall and sat. How many centuries had it been since she had last grown this tired from using magic? Probably not since the first time I first succeeded in magic. Did a master praise me for that back then? Oh, but I myself killed that master who praises me, didn't I? Don't be naive, Beatrice. In the end, that's what it means to kill something, right? You used that magic to bring humans happiness. あたまんなかさんけつでからっからで思い出すもへちまもねえぜそれよりあんた殺したじゃねえかよ現れるんじゃねえよあなたが未だに私を生かしていますよだからこうして現れられますもっともあなたの頭を鍋に来たわけでも
Beato? Then the tip of the snake met Beato's gaze. In that instant, Beato prepared herself for death. Just then, Virgilia stood in front of her, the fingers of both her hands drawing a mark. Oh? In that instant, gold-colored gold leaf buried the inside of the parlor. It was like a blizzard of gold. Beto, so isn't she gonna die? So, Avatrice needs to kill Beatrice? Damn. Oh, the sister's golden bow would not let its kill escape. It would not let them block it. No magical barrier could even dream of blocking it without being multi-layered. The weak point during the instant of confusion caused by Virgilia's deception magic was Beato's only chance to escape, and the only opportunity to make the sisters confuse Virgilia for Beato. So Virgilia is gonna die. Aww. As Virgilia spread her arms wide, blocking the way to her beloved disciple, the gold snake pierced straight through the location of her heart. Oh, Virgilia! The snake, which had snuck in through the keyhole, shot through George and Shannon, and then shot through Virgilia in an instant, completely failed to notice as Beato escaped. I like Virgilia. I'm so sad. As soon as Virgilia saw that Beato had gotten away, she expired. But the only good thing is that technically she was meant to die anyway. She's already dead, I guess. The strength left her body, and like gold dust drifting with the wind, her form was erased. Beato completely erased all traces of her magical power, became gold butterflies, and passed through the wall, escaping to the wind and rain outside. <laughs> Beato felt sick in the bottom of her heart. Why? Because she had been attacked by the new witch? Probably not. Of course, she also felt sick over the loss of her master. It's just kind of funny that it's only now that she starts to feel sad about it when before she could she didn't have to kill her master, but she did. But even more than that, Beato was enraged at the barbarism which had boorishly stolen the union between the two united reunited lovers. Beato had poured out almost all of her magical power to reunite them. That miracle had been achieved only as a result of all of that, yet it had taken such a short time to steal it away. Beato trembled at the barbarous cruelty which had ended it so fast, and it was also the true form of the act she herself had committed up until that point. But just as strongly as Beato hated the new witch, he looked at her previous self with disgust. But now, she had to escape. If she was targeted next, she would probably lose her life. And it wouldn't even be funny if the chess player, descended like a god, ended up being attacked and killed by pieces. 45. Nihi? 
もう一度引き裂いて三度楽しめるだっけ<笑>そのついでにあのクソうるさいババアまでさよならできて最高にご機嫌よロノウェイ文句ないわよねございませんベアトリーチェ様あいつは魔女の非分の儀式を妨害したのよ Piece of shit ever be a t u r i s t I'm so angry 第一のバンド生贄を勝手によみがえらせて私の儀式を妨害したわ文句言われる筋合いなんか何にもないわよ He's really ten times worse than Beatrice ever was <laughs> しかしずるいなあいつは死体を残さないのねあのババアも思いっきり何度も無限にいじめ殺して遊んでやろうと思ったのに確か4時か5時くらいだったかな最低でも1時間以上は前だよ俺たち眠くなってその後は多分居眠りしてたしでも多分ジェシカの言う通りだと思うぜ1時間か2時間くらい前だったわ、ま、私もそのくらいの頃だと記憶していますコーヒーのおかわりはいるかと聞かれましたからな Something hard to believe had happened. Apparently, when Auntie Eva had left for a second to visit the laboratory, Uncle Krause and Aunt Natsuhi had disappeared. There was no way they went hiding somewhere. Of course, the doors and windows had all been rigorously checked and were locked from the inside. Not one of them was broken. And that wasn't just the first floor, the second floor was the same. Also, all of the doors and windows were designed in such a way that they couldn't be locked from the outside. In other words, there was no way that Uncle Krause and Aunt Natsuhi had gone outside. And yet, they couldn't be found. Furthermore, they weren't the only ones who had disappeared. Astonishingly, George Aniki had too. George Aniki had left saying that he was going to get more coffee. And had gone downstairs more than an hour earlier. I'd been under the impression that he was having a good conversation with Auntie Eva and the rest. But Auntie Eva, who had been in the lobby the whole time, said no one had come down. Since all of the doors and windows are locked from the inside, it's hard to imagine that they went outside. Nevertheless, three humans had evaporated from this barricaded guest house, which had become a perfect locked room. Exactly. How? It's hard to imagine any reason why they hide themselves away for a surprise prank in a situation like this. It's probably appropriate to think that they've become caught up in this crime. When Auntie Eva learned that her only son was missing, she went half insane, running from room to room and yelling his name loudly. And Jessica, who had suddenly lost both of her parents, followed suit. Cries of George, George, and Mom, Dad were even now continuing to echo throughout the guest house. I think George said something about wanting to see Shannon's face. It would be reasonable to imagine that he had snuck out of the guest house and gone to the mansion. However, I don't know about Uncle Krause and Aunt Natsuhi. Maybe they guessed that's what happened and went to the mansion to search for him? Without even telling Auntie Eva? At this rate, it's only a matter of time before we start talking about leaving the guest house to search for them. At this point, I'd be in favor of that. We said that shutting ourselves up in a guest house would be safe. I shut ourselves in this morning as a big happy family of 12 people. And yet, now there are only four people here. In other words, 
being here does not imply safety. However, there is something even more important that we mustn't forget. That's the fact that all of the doors and windows were locked from the inside. This is a locked room. How had they vanished from this place? What you think about? We'd search around thoroughly. However, we were unable to find any signs of anyone hiding. The three of them had almost certainly had taken, been taken outside the guest house. The chair in the background is just kind of suspicious to me. Come on, Nanjo, we've been over this. There's no hidden doors. そう for some time, Battler had been opening windows, opening the shutters, and checking outside, and repeating this for each window. Wow, Battler. この窓は静かだな。なるほど。この窓は他と違って建物の構造上風が吹き込まないわけか。そのようですな。こんなにも外は不運なのに雨も風も入ってこないとは不思議な気持ちです。南条先生、今窓を開けた時、音を感じたかい。え、え、気にはなりませんでしたな。よく油が効いていると思います。つまり誰も見ていない廊下の窓から
they could dig their own grave with it. It should have been more ex expedient, expedient to make it look like the culprit was outside and to intentionally leave a door unlocked or brave a window. Brave a window, break a window. もし、この失踪劇が今日の昼にでも起こればこの難解に至っては全然自信が持てないぜ。何なんだこいつは。一体何を意味してやがるんだ。この密室はよ。やはりその。I still stand by that someone wants to convey a message with this locked room, with all the murders. Someone wants to convey a message. If not, why go through all of this trouble for to create a locked room when it would be so much easier to just kill them, take them out one by one, right? Either this culprit is just completely sadistic or they are... they have a motive. Hmm. Because Dr. Nanjo looked like he was trying to swallow his words despite having thought of something, I urged him on. After he refused several times, saying that it was just a foolish idea, he finally said it out loud. Nanjo is a paid shill to to convince Battler that witches exist, okay? We don't trust Nanjo. Majoは私たちに訴えたいのです。人間にはできないことをやって抜けるからこそ、自分を魔女だと認めさせたいに違いないのです。私はこのゲストハウス全体の密室からの失踪は。now the question is whether the message that I'm thinking of is the one that Nanjo said that the person just wants to make us accept that they are a witch or is it something different? As Dr. Nanjo shook with fear, it looked like he was trying to erase the fearsome thoughts that he kept imagining, one after the other. When he went downstairs, Auntie Eva and Jessica were enraged, and were each making a lot of noise about leaving this place and searching for their respective families. It was a desire that naturally hits those who can no longer see their family. Auntie Eva told Dr. Nanjo and me to stay here, but I shook my head and started walking. The blood had all risen to Jessica's head. I hope it doesn't set off her asthma. If the alternative was holding up alone in a guest house whose security was by no means guaranteed, it would be better to be in a dangerous zone as a group of four people. Auntie Eva was holding a gun. Moving separately from her was almost like asking to be made into the next victim. Well, Kitty and Rudolph had guns, but they still died. In this way, the four of us decided to leave the guest house. We barricaded ourselves in, saying we'd be safe if we did, and then lost eight people. It was almost as though this had been nothing more than a holding cell for which the sacrifices could be killed one after another. We removed the chain, unlocked the front door, and opened it. It was already pitch black out. While there were some lights outside which dimly lit the pathway, they didn't have enough power to illuminate the darkness that some suspicious person was likely to be hiding in. Still holding her gun, 
Auntie Eva dashed out without an umbrella. Jessica followed after her. After looking at each other, Dr. Nanjo and I chased after them. You know what just hit me? What just what I was just reminded of? But that suspicious person uh that is unaccounted for in episode one that they found in a boiler room and Battler wanted to chase them but they couldn't find that person. So there is someone. There is someone. There is a culprit. But we just don't know who it is. What in the world is happening in this mansion on this island? Since yesterday, I've just been shut up in the cousin's room in the guest house with the rest of my cousins. Though I don't know anything about what's been going on outside. Just what has been happening in those places I don't know about. Outside the room, in the mansion, and on this island. Everything is occurring, everything is proceeding, and everything is ending without my knowing it. Such an odd phrasing. Someone in my heart had already begun to give up. Most likely, not one of us will see tomorrow morning. When the seagulls cry, none shall be left alive. <laughs> I knew it! <laughs> I knew it! End of this... part. Big clock moment. The witch's courtroom. 603. I guess I should say, I should just talk about the last chapter first, and honestly, George and Shannon's reunion really touched my heart, and I think I, I mean, I was tearing up in that moment, it was a very emotional moment, knowing how much love George has for Shannon and how much they love each other is really such a powerful thing, but it's also the same as for Eva and Hideyoshi, they really the two of them really love each other but but Hideyoshi is dead and then George is dead of course Eva is gonna go crazy about it they, they those two people are literally her only the only people that she cares about or that you could say cares for her in a way and yeah I I definitely empathize with all of their feelings there yeah and Virgilia dying also broke my heart because Virgilia has been a very good person through this episode. I can't believe it. I really can't. And then Natsui and Kraus went out in a very almost anticlimactic way. They just died. And we don't know where their bodies are taken to, but I suppose, I suspect that they will be found somewhere. Maybe in a rose garden or something. And, and yeah, there will be more hints, I think, or taunts left by the by the killer but yeah interestingly we don't have any more letters and that's probably because we also changed words that's what i'm assuming but anyway let's continue <laughs> jessica's wolf voice echoed throughout the rose garden Perhaps it was the intuition of a person who lived on this island. After Jessica had looked in the rose garden where Auntie Rosa and Maria had fallen and seen nothing, she had gone to look in the arbor next. Normally, the arbor was probably a wonderful occasion to enjoy tea, peacefully while appreciating the roses on a good sunny day. Who knows, maybe even Uncle Krause and Aunt Natsuhi at your days where they relaxed and enjoyed tea together there. Oh no. In that arbor lay the bodies of Uncle Krause and Aunt Natsui. At least, they weren't drenched in the rain like Auntie Rosa and Maria had been. But there was no way I could say that out loud to Jessica at that moment. Everything is really changing with, with the deaths in episode 3. It's so, so different now than what it used to be. 
主たる死因のわけはねえだろうよ。Two stick like weapons decorated with an occult design were, that were lying on the ground had been found driven into Uncle Krause's thigh area and near Aunt Natsuhi's kelf. When we had found these sticking out of my parents' forehead and chest, we had decided to leave them exactly as they were for the police and to preserve the crime scene. But Jessica no longer cared about such matters and immediately pulled the stakes out of her parents' forsaken bodies. ダイハチの番までは、これで終わったわ。続くは第9の番なの。魔女は蘇る。誰も生き残れはしない。上等だぜ。魔女が蘇る姿を現してくれるってことなんだろう。何が誰も生き残れないだ。私が殺してやる。
up the stone steps, running at full speed towards the mansion whose large, intimidating shadow flashed in the lightning. With this, the epitaph murderers had finished the eighth twilight, and now on the ninth twilight, the witch will revive. None shall be left alive. I will most likely lose my life. But at the very least, I wanted to burn that truth into my eyes. That was the only thing motivating me to move at that moment. We were able to reunite with Auntie Eva, who was having trouble with the lock to the front door. It seemed that all the blood had risen to Auntie Eva's head. That was probably making her fingers clumsy. It seemed she couldn't even handle the simple task of inserting the key into the lock. Then there was a faint sound. The sound of the door unlocking. It's as though it had waited for all of the survivors to unite before opening. It seemed to me as though the malicious mansion was trying to swallow all of the remaining humans at once. The stench that erupted outwards at the instant the door opened. Could it really be explained as just a smell? It wasn't just a charred smell from grandfather. I think it may also have contained something like... Regrets, held by so many dead, including our parents and all of the servants. What did it mean as it billowed out, overwhelming us? Was it a cry of the dead? Telling us not to enter. However, Auntie Eva didn't even flinch at something like that. And we, who had to chase after her, were forced to step into the mansion despite receiving that message. Georgie? Georgie? If you hear it, don't say anything! Georgie! Auntie Eva shouted at the top of her lungs. Considering the situation, it's probably far too optimistic to imagine that he's alive. When we also started following Auntie Eva's example and calling George Aniki's name in loud voices, Auntie Eva found something and stopped walking. She was standing in front of the door to the parlor. <laughs> what is it? I had heard from the adults about the creepy magic circles that had been drawn on doors such as the one to the parlor. Creepy was the only word to describe that thing, which had been scrawled there with a deep red paint, reminiscent of blood that slowly dripped down. However, that had supposedly been there since this morning. Wondering why Auntie Eva, who had seen it already, would think it odd now, Jessica and I stared at the door. Numbers? From what the two of them said, only a magic circle had been there, here, this morning. However, right now, there were eight digits newly written in the upper part of the magic circle. Eight digits. Oh, that is scary. <laughs> 0715 Seven digits. Could be a date, actually. 7, 15 July. 1129. Could be something else entirely as well. But it's not one that stands out to me. Oh, that's so creepy. I didn't know what it meant. But I didn't even want to imagine the thought process of whoever wrote this. It was drawn with what was probably the same paint as the magic circle. But it had clearly been written very recently. The way it had dried and the condition of the color was completely different from the magic circle part. <laughs> 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 I 
意味なんかあるわけもないさ Jessica intentionally spat those words out in an attempt to wipe out how creepy it was. Ma, ma Magic square? Like we square root the number? Hmm. hmm, actually, that sounds quite familiar. Like the. I can't remember what it was. Something about letters being repeated over again in a square. I forgot what it was. But if anyone knows what I'm talking about, please leave it in the comment section. どの列を足しても同じ数字になるみたいなものを皆さんも見聞きしたことが終わりでしょう。あれは四角形の中に埋めた数字の話じゃなかった。これは横一列だもの。Maybe the culprit wants us to fill it in a square. Even though she said that, she probably suspected that it might actually mean something. Using an old receipt or something from her inside of her pockets. Auntie Eva definitely wrote that number down with a short ballpoint pen. Because an 8 digit number would probably be a little difficult to memorize unless it had some kind of pattern. Pattern. That's what I said, Battler, but I don't think it is. What's Oh, what? <laughs> Add that to the character menu, please. Wait, okay, so not a year, but... But November 29. Is there something that happens from July to November? I don't know. Why is it written in such a place? And what is it about the 11th of July? I know. I mean, it's just a coincidence. If I think なんだか不気味になっちまったぜ。11月29日が誰かの誕生日だったりとかするのか。うちの家族は違うぜ。親父も綺麗さんも、縁者も違う。もちろん、俺の袋もだ。心当たりがありませんが、金蔵さんの
Or it could always just be the culprit trying to mess around with with the remaining people. And now that a number had been newly added to the door, one new thing had been added inside the parlor. That's what I said! When Auntie Eva tried to open it, she felt the resistance of the lock. The lock room again! Immediately took out the master key and put it in the keyhole. As soon as she opened the door, Auntie Eva let up a high-pitched scream and ran inside. That alone was enough to tell us what had happened inside the room. Dr. Nanjo and I looked at each other, and I shook my head slightly as we entered the parlor. Jordi! Jordi! Please! Jordi! Nanjo, hurry up! George Aniki had fallen alongside Shannon Chan's body. His chest was stained bright red. And from his still open eyes, all oh, my co condolences to Andy Eva, but I couldn't pick up any signs of life. After moving to take his pulse, Dr. Nanjo shook his head wordlessly, reporting that George Aniki was dead. Brushing him aside, Andy Eva once again crouched beside George Aniki and started crying at the top of her lungs. With this, Aniki's death, one thing had become certain. The murders would not be ending at the 8th twilight. Ah, no wonder I was counting. I was counting. Uh, it seemed that we had one death too many, but I wasn't completely sure. The epitaph was going to be carried out in its complete form, including the ninth toilet and none shall be left alive. I'm really starting to lose the plot. For some reason, Auntie Eva's helping sane cries and appearance actually made me cool down. Crestfallen and exhausted, I flopped onto the sofa and plucked my feet on top of the table. Maybe all of these murders had paralyzed my heart. Instead of fright, the stronger emotion I'm feeling is one of complete confusion. Dead and Kitty's son had died, and starting with the servants, people have been killed off one by one. And at one hell of a pace, too. I don't know what time the first murder started, but I'd say we are probably being killed at a rate of about one person an hour. One person an hour! Damn! We believe that the boat will come for us around 9 to go- 9 tomorrow. There's still a full 12 hours until then. How many more sacrifices to the witch would there have to be for us to survive? The four of us, if one goes each hour, we won't last any longer than four hours. It's not clear anymore if we'll even last until night tonight. Yesterday after lunch, I came into this parlor. At about the time that the discussion had turned to the black tea that Auntie Rosa said she bought, we kids had started talking about going to take a walk. Maria was fooling around. Didn't Shannon Chan bring us some cookies? She said that Kumasawa's son had baked them or something. I'd probably have laughed my ass off if there had actually been a cooked mackerel one mixed in with them. Right? I'll never hear Kumasawa Bachan's mackerel jokes again, will I? Oh yeah. If I only remember stuff about Kumasawa Bachan, that wouldn't be fair to everyone else. Why did Dad and Kiriya-san even go outside? It's not like we die from being without food for a day. So why did Glutton get a hold of them and make them go get food? I'll bet it was my fearless dad who started complaining about being hungry. Hidea san, you were supposed to be the brakes for my reckless dad. Why didn't you stop him? And what about your daughter? Angie. She's only six years old. You weren't thinking of entrusting her to me, were you? 
At this point, it's doubtful that even I will be able to leave this island alive. Oh. Some kind of commotion was interrupting my thoughts. I looked up to see what it was and saw that Jessica and Auntie Eva had started fighting each other at some point. No. Maybe I should say that Jessica was grabbing at Auntie Eva. エヴァおばさんが父さんたちを殺したんだ。他に説明がつかない。何をバカなことを。あんたのお父さんたちなんか知るわけないでしょ。ゲストハウスの1階にいたのは誰だよ。エヴァおばさんだ。1階のロビー
おいおいどうしたってんだ何事なんだ Jessica had grabbed at Auntie Eva and had turned into a scuffle. They had then started fighting over the gun Auntie Eva had been holding. And some movement or other caused the trigger to be pulled. I didn't know the details about whether the bullet had grazed her or whether she had been burned by the discharge. But whatever the case, Jessica was covering both of her eyes, screaming in pain and rolling around on the floor. <laughs> I'm so worried for Jessica and how her if her asthma is going to be triggered at this time. Dr. Nanjo lent Jessica his shoulder, saying that he would tend to her in the servant room. The servant room in this mansion apparently had a bed and a first aid kit, and was able to function as an infirmary. Jessica still continued to curse Auntie Eva as her parents' murderer. It seemed that Auntie Eva couldn't conceal her shock at the fact that she had pulled the trigger, even if it had been an accident. I didn't know whether it was because Auntie Eva couldn't stand her mistake, or whether it was because she had lost herself to anger at the person who had killed her only son, or whether it was both of those all mixed together. In any case, she ran out into the corridor, yelling, fearful, and shouting. I was also worried about Jessica's condition, but anyway right then, I couldn't leave Auntie Eva alone. Why would she go off on her own in this mansion of all places? Is she suicidal? Dr. Nanjo took Jessica towards the servant room. I chased after Auntie Eva, dashing into the gaps of the mansion. I'm waiting for Evatris to appear. After sitting Jessica on the servant room bed, Nanjo told her several times not to rub her eyes and examine the affected area. The barrel had probably been near her eyes. There was a possibility that the flames from this charge had damaged her corneas. There was no threat to her life, but it would probably be necessary to have a suitable doctor look at her as soon as humanly possible. Nanjo applied emergency first aid covering the affected area with gauze and wrapping it with a bandage. As a result, Jessica completely lost her feel of vision. いいですかな傷が痛んだり、うずいたりするでしょうが、絶対に書いたり揉んだりしてはなりませんぞ。明日になったらすぐに眼科の先生のところへ行きましょう。あいつね、本当は私を殺すつもりだったんだ。I think it was an accident or something else, but I don't think Eva was trying to kill Jessica in any case. And I really think it's just the tensions running high and the anger and distrust both Jessica and Eva have towards each other right now that is making her think this way. <laughs> エヴァさんはそんなことはしませんぞ。あれは事故です。事故なもんか。
あいつが父さんと母さんを殺したんだこの島には19人目も魔女もいるわけがないあいつが全ての犯人なんだゲストハウスの1階にはあいつだけがいた I can't help but feel this is so weird I already say this 父さんと母さんを殺しそれを見てしまったジョージ兄さんも口封じに殺したに違いないじいさまや使用人の人たちだってそうさきっとあいつは夕べの親族会議の途中でこっそり抜け出しみんなを殺したに違いないも,もしそうならば警察が調べればすぐにわかることですアンジョー・リリー is the only person here who is so rational and calmly talking about it but it's also true that he hasn't lost anyone Here, no one precious to him, I guess. Well, if you want to call Kinzo precious to him, then he did lose Kinzo, but he doesn't seem very affected compared to everyone else. And maybe that's why he gets to say all these very rational things. Indeed, when Jessica had grown agitated in her verbal abuse of Eva, she had naturally started glaring, and the pressure on her eyes hurt her. Jessica herself soon realized. That the more she talked, the more the wound would hurt. And regardless of whether she had overcome her suspicions of Eva, she regained her composure for the time being. She had heard that Cannon had been killed in a chapel. Jessica still hasn't seen his face after he had died. Jessica was now less fearful about the fact that she might go blind, and more frightened that the police would carry Cannon's corpse away while she still couldn't see, and that she would have to say her final farewell without being able to see his face. Her anger at the culprit. And her sadness at the death of the person she had liked. Those mixed emotions provoked her tear ducts. But right now, tears were actually painful for her. So she wasn't even permitted to leisurely remember the late Cannon's face. Jessica could do nothing but sit on a bed and let her head droop, withstanding the pain. <sighs> Letting out a small sigh of relief that Jessica had calmed down for the time being, he stuck his head out into the hallway to look for any sign of the others coming back. I'm so. Oh, whoa, whoa. Oh, my God. <laughs> ah! Hey. Mad eyes. Nanjo, unable to understand who this person was, was bewildered for an instant. Interesting. Everyone else recognized Evatris as Eva the first time they saw her, but Nanjo doesn't recognize who that person is. That's interesting. Where did she hear that from? Oh, God. It's so creepy. Her eyes, her teeth. There was no possible way that Nanjo could have understood who the person in front of him was. And there was certainly no possible way that he could. Ever have understood what she had just said, 
I really think this is important. The fact that Nanjo doesn't understand that that's... Eva. Why? Why? But the only persons who have ever recognized Evatris as Eva were... Uh, her siblings and of course Hideyoshi. But what links them all together? What's... what's different about Nanjo? Is, he be is it because he's not an Ushiro Miya member? Is it because he's not blood related? Or maybe something else entirely? Nanjo sensei. Unable to see, Jessica couldn't tell what was going on except by whatever voice she heard. But since she had heard Nanjo say something with an uneasy an tone, she tightened up. Thinking that something bad might have happened. Jessica couldn't do anything except call out from the bed. Judging by the tone of his voice, Nanjo was in the corridor, being confronted by someone. And he was scared. There was no doubt that at this very moment, his life was being threatened. The witch pointed the end of a golden staff at Nanjo. Even though he didn't know what she was planning to do, Nanjo imagined that she must be trying to take his life. Nanjo, just run away! Just run away! Nanjo, Nanjo, is something preventing him from running away? Why can't he run away? Why is he just standing there? Paralyzed? That was like a gun. Bang. A sharp sound echoed. Well, that would make sense. If it was a gun. If it was a gun that was threatening him, even if he ran, he would probably still die. But still. And tapered to a point just as sharp, Elongated tip of the golden staff was stuck straight into Nanjo's forehead, but it sounded like a gun. Jessica, who only had her ears to help her try to grasp what was happening, had no clue what was going on. But even so, she was able to realize that with that sound, Nanjo had died. And the person who had killed him was now in a corridor right in front of the servant room. Furthermore, since she couldn't see, he wouldn't even be able to run away, much less resist. Upon discovering that she was in a life or death situation, caught like a rat in a trap, Jessica felt her blood run cold. Ah, Jessica, tired, so ni ne, me o pegashchatta no ne. Nara, anata wa nigeru koto mo deki nai wa ne. Ima kara nanjo no shitai de tappuri asubu wa. Sare ni akitara.次はあなたを殺してたっぷり遊んであげる。いいえ。せっかく目が見えないんだもの。殺してからだけじゃない。殺す前にもたっぷり遊んであげるわね。ホラブル。そこでしばらく震えながら待ってなさいね。南条の死
searched around with her hands, trying to find some way to escape. But even though she knew this room well, just being unable to see made it look... made it like a locked room of darkness. She bumped into some shelves or something, as some tins of sweets and bottles and things fell down from them, hitting her on the head. As she was now, even protecting her head to block them wasn't working out. She was becoming painfully aware of how very powerless humans become just by losing their sense of sight. Of course, she had no time to appreciate that. She crawled around as best as she could, trying to escape that place. But she kept bumping into things that she didn't understand, getting hit by various falling objects. And it felt like to her, like the entire room was alive, bullying her and refusing to let her escape. Seems like she was she's gonna die if she keeps bumping into things like that, rather than Evatrice actually killing her. But I think it's interesting that Jessica doesn't see Evatrice. I know Maria recognized Evatrice as un Auntie Eva, but what if Jessica doesn't? You know? Maybe some clues will be helpful. Then she heard footsteps from the presence in the hallway. And then a voice. The person had probably peered into the room since Jessica was making so much noise. Just a short while ago, she had sworn that she would kill the culprit if she found them. However, she was now all too powerless. She couldn't do anything except let out feeble screams and crawl around on the floor, bumping her head into the bed and the legs of desks. In the corridor, as the witch thought of how to toy with Nanjo's life, a single gold butterfly secretly watched that scene from the corner of the hallway. Beatrice? It was Beato, who had barely escaped with her life once before. The gold butterfly softly returned to human form. Its form was faint and transparent like a lace curtain. Even just the power to hold a human form had become scarce for her. Right next to her, Renove also appeared. Jessica <laughs>魔女として恥ずべきことであった。愛とは一なる幻想。恋心はそれ以上に純粋で尊いものでございます。なぜかお嬢様はとてもそれを嫌われますが。お師匠様は言った。魔法とは人を幸せにするためにあると。わらわもかつてはそれを知っていたはずだったそしてそれを忘れた時からわらわは魔女ではなくなっていたのだからわらわはバトラの対戦相手の資格を失っていたのだ。I'm just gonna say I like this song. And I'm pretty sure this is the same one that plays when we're talking about witches and 
a purpose? Or was it when Battler was telling Beatrice off? Masaka Ojo-sama. Jessica will take care of you. It's dangerous. 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 あやつの殺し方に比べれば数段慈悲深い。魔女の宴は恐るべき方法にて命を奪うが、生死をもてあそばない。しかし、あやつは違う。何度でも殺す。面白半分で殺す。そこにはわずかほどの慈悲もない。
かつて黄金の魔女と呼ばれた一匹の蝶に最後となるかもしれぬ魔法を見るがいい Her talking about her being a butterfly just kind of gave me an image of, I don't know, Kinzo in his youth, playing around, frolicking in his garden, Beatrice the butterfly, playing with him through the garden. And that day, Kinzo fell in love with the butterfly known as Beatrice, and then he spent the rest of his life trying to give that butterfly a human form, and he finally did, maybe. <laughs> and now they're fighting. Silly, it's silly, but somehow the imagination runs wild. Kashikumari Masta Ogon no Majo no Nani Hajinu Maho Haiken Sasete Moraimas Nega Wakuba Sorega Saigo no Maho to Naran Koto Yuke Mosi Inkuna Tariruna Waga Oro Kanaru Shoga Yoshiruste. Beatrice, you're such a good person now. Apple. Ah, Cannon. Are you the real cannon? Jessica thought that she had just heard Cannon's voice. She looks around with unseeing eyes, but of course, there was no, no way for her to see anything. On the contrary, the action caused her head to hit the desk again. This time, he thought that she had heard his voice clearly. Tsuka jumped up in surprise, banging her head against the desk once again.僕は生きてはいません。僕はすでに死んでしまっています。ですが、あの魔女がお嬢様の危機を僕に知らせに来ました。そしてわずかの間だけお嬢様に手助けできる時間をくれました。どうか心をもっと落ち着けて。Jessica obeyed those words. She chased all idle thoughts from her head and relaxed her breathing. Her heart actually felt like it was going to explode after hearing the voice of the loved one she thought was dead. She resisted that with all of her strength. When she did, she could feel that Cannon Kun was really right in front of her. Even though she was unable to see, somehow she was still able to sense him clearly. Bokura. <sighs> 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 
お嬢様に触れることはできませんこうして言葉をかけることしかできないそれだけしかできないか弱い存在ですがそれでもお嬢様の力になれるはずです言葉だけなのカノン君に触ることはできないの僕は今ろうそくの煙よりも儚い存在です聖者であるお嬢様に触れられればたちまち書き消えてしまうほどにだからどうか触れようとしないでください僕もお嬢様に触れたい気持ちを抑えているのですからそれよりお嬢様よく聞いてください新しい黄金の魔女は残酷な心の持ち主です必ずやお嬢様をひどい目に遭わせようとするでしょう Owner of a cruel heart. I was just reminded of how、mm, Ken and Shannon have hearts, right? What if e v a t r i s is like that too? I don't know. この部屋から逃げ出し隠れなければなりませんど,どうやって私は目が見えない静かに僕がお嬢様の目になります僕がかける言葉に従って動いてくださいまずそのまま三歩吐いててそれから立ち上がってください今お嬢様がいるのは机の下ですそのまま立ては頭をぶつけます机の下だったのか分かったよ123立つぜお上手です次は時計で言う九時の方向を向いてくださいはいお上手です<笑>なんだか恥ずかしいぜ<笑>え大丈夫ですか傷が痛みますかいや平気だぜ次はジェシカ thought that if this was a dream she didn't want to wake up and if she were allowed to she would have wanted to take off the bandage covering her eyes and see him however if she did that she really kind of vanished like a frail kennel smoke Just like he himself had said. He was afraid of that. But she satisfied herself with just being able to hear his words once more. Repressing her desire to see him, to hold him. So what hurt her eyes now were tears of gratitude. Tears of gratitude for the god, or else which who had given her this miraculous moment. <laughs> あいつに気づかれない声を聞かれない隠密の結界を張っています大きな音や声を出さなければ誰も気づきませんだから誰も僕の気配には気づけないな,なんだかわからないけどとにかく静かにしてれば大丈夫ってことなんだな次はどうするんだそのままゆっくり十歩ほどを歩いてくださいソファーに触りますそれに沿って進んでくださいゆっくりと落ち着いて僕の言葉を信じてあ,あ<笑>不思議だぜ目が見えないってのは。あんなにも怖いものだったのにカノン君と一緒だと全然怖くないよそうそれがソファーです左になぞりながらゆっくり進んですぐ左にテーブルがあります
すねをぶつけないように気をつけて。It was a very, very peculiar and magical team effort. Even though she would be killed in an instant if she was noticed by the terrible witch, there was no fear in Jessica's heart right then. She was being protected and guided by Cannon, who she had thought she would never be able to meet with again. It was probably only a momentary miracle, but even so, Jessica was deeply grateful for it. If she hoped for too much, she was sure that he would disappear. So, in order not to break this transient miracle, and in order to engrave this moment into her heart for all eternity, she slowly, slowly continued to walk, obeying Cannon's voice. さあ、さらに十分歩けば。使用に室から出ますそしたら9時の方向を向いてゆっくりとずっと歩いてください Isn't Evertris outside the servant room? 右の壁に手を置きそれに沿ってずっとずっと僕が安全な部屋までお連れしますそこに行ったらカノ君は帰っちゃうの<笑> Cannon didn't answer, but even his lack of an answer was enough to let her know that was the truth. ヒアデアレボクニワ。人の世は眩しくて辛すぎる。だから長くは留まれません。だからお嬢様。僕に許された時間でお嬢様を安全な場所まで導くことを。そしたら時間が尽きるまでずっとお嬢様と一緒にい
Not me smiling like an idiot, watching a scene unfold. Quietly, quietly, Jessica and Cannon snuck slowly out of the servant room. Directly around the corner, the witch could be seen cruelly looking down upon Nanjo's corpse. The witch did not even notice their presence. However, Ronove, who was waiting at her side, met Cannon's eyes. And I thought, oh no, you're amazing and blocking Jessica with his back. However, Renove did not inform his master. As though it had been his imagination that he ever spotted him in the first place, he pretended to know nothing. No, maybe he did appear to chuckle. From a finger on one of Renove's hands, which were joined behind his back, a single small gold butterfly appeared, flying in front of Cannon as though guiding him. It was undetectable by the master he served. Cannon was surprised at the magic that butterfell butterfly held, because it was far more powerful than the self barrier Cannon had. He may not have known, but that power had originally been Ronove's. An imitation of that had been given to Cannon by Kinzo. And that was what Cannon was using now? Hold on, this is confusing. As that butterfly of self magic scattered gold scales, it grew smaller bit by bit. It probably wouldn't last long. But without a doubt, even that would buy them enough time to get far away from the cruel witch. Let him protected by the small gold butterfly, the two was who were separated by the wall between life and death slowly walked away towards the end of the corridor. There was no way that the evil witch would have any magic to notice their flight. Until they had already disappeared down the other end of the corridor, the witch never noticed that Jessica had vanished. By the time the gold butterfly that Ronove had cast out evaporated completely, Jessica had reached the parlor. Even though she would have been able to make it this far in no time if she had been able to see, as she was now, it had been a long, long adventure. さあ、お嬢様。客間にたどり着きました。これからお嬢様を窓際のカーテンの束のところまでお連れします。その中に隠れれば、きっと安全です。マジックカーテンズ。カーテンの中か。うまいな。私も昔よくそこに隠れたも
<笑>あ,あのありがとうベアトリーチェカノン君に会わせてくれてありがとう Nasuka didn't know where Biato was, so she said that while facing in the wrong direction. Perhaps because she found that funny, Biato snickered. ベアトリーチ様ありがとうございますでなどいらん。こんなのでは償いきれぬほど悪行を重ねておることはそなたがよく知っておろうに良き魔女には感謝を選別としますそして、これからがどうであるかは知らないしかし今この瞬間あなた
<laughs> the gold snake had that had shot through Biato grew even longer, drawing a helix like a morning glory vine and awaited its next order. It was ready to pierce a vital spot as soon as the merciless witch told it to. どういう風の吹きまさか。さて。<笑> <laughs> when she ordered that, the gold snake that was curled in a helix, suspended in space, moved as fast as a real snake going after its prey, and pierced Beato's body multiple times from the front and the back its golden tail drawing an axe shape. As a ruthless witch had ordered, it drew a cross stitch through Beato's chest. The gold thread made a squeaking sound and tormented Beato. Rather than a gold snake aiming for its prey, it waited for orders in midair as if it was a sewing needle ready to sew Beato. あんたに限って気まぐれなんてあるわけがない。あんたのことを聞いたわ。そしてしたわ。あんたは私です。足元にも及ばない。ジャークの権限を私はそんなあなたに実力さらしい後継者だと思ったの。なのにあなたは邪
この世はすべからく有限人の世に無限などありはしないそれは神が無限であるがゆえに人の世を見下すためすべての無限を取り上げたからよなればつまり無限の力とは神の力遊べば遊ぶほどにさらに楽しい遊び方を見つけられる素敵な力その力を千年も思うがままに使い暴れ回ったあなたがなぜ今頃になって心変わりをしたのまさか私に譲ったから惜しくなってとかじゃないわよね。惜しいものかそなたがそうだと信じている無限の魔法など魔法にあらず真の魔法の力とはそなたなどでは到底至れぬ深淵にあるのだそれに気づいたからそれは何 ?That the single element of the world <笑>それに気づけず千年をさまよえ愚かな魔女よヌエ今度は三つ They continue embroidering Beato's chest the gold thread It tightened even more causing Beato more and more pain まあ、いいわ死に損ないのババアが何を達観したかなんてもう興味も何もないもう飽きたからあっさり殺してあげるわあんたを殺せば客前の結界は解けるそしたらカノンとジェシカも愛し合う二人を同時におもちゃにできるなんて<笑>これは楽しそうよね<笑><笑>どうか許してはくれぬかいやよ愛し合う二人を引き裂くのって楽しいんでしょあなたが言ったわだから私やってみたいの<笑>ならばその快楽貴様に味わわせるわけがいいかな<笑>楽しいぞ恋人たちを引き裂くのそうよねきっと楽しいわよねだから邪魔しないでもっとヌエヌエヌエヌエニヒッ4一丸了解The merciless gold sewing needle sewed its golden thread through Beato's heart over and over again. However, no matter how much it tightened, that heart did not stop. Mada, Mada, Kono Tedo de Wa Tarinuna, Kono Tedo de Wa Sinde Wa Yarinu. Nani was there no? Kono Baba no Sabbat you, Tomenasa. 早く殺すのよ殺してます
何度も心臓を縫い止めてるのにこいつの心臓と止まらないんですあんた不死身なのなおまさかそなたに無限は譲り渡した鼓動を刻める数など残すところもたかが知れている This is so sad. だがそれを一つ余計に刻むことでこの部屋の二人にわずかでも長い時間を与えられるならその程度の抵抗を永遠に続けようぞぬえこいつの心臓が動きを止めるまで縫い続けよう Epitrace is scared of that. This is horrible. Why do you not die? 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 Why do you Gold needle and thread me rounds round trips over and over again, again as they spoke, as the Beato didn't expire. The barbarous witch was at last starting to turn pale at how unnatural this was. <laughs> Is she really going to die? <laughs> What is she? わからぬだろうなわらわもわからなかったさだがなどうやらこれが本当の魔法というものらしいぞつまりわらわは今こそなったカムエッ本当の魔女になった True Witch 心臓内部で爆心固定瞬間準備よし爆破どうし He's gone? There was a deafening sound and gold leaf and a flutter of gold butterflies were scattered around the area Vieto's chest had opened wide from the inside and from that gold butterflies and gold leaf erupted Staining the surrounding area gold. Then Beato's body crumpled. Like a puppet whose strings had been cut. She crumpled and sank down to the floor. Oh my god. However, in the air, a gold heart tied by gold threads floated and continued to beat. Oh my god. So. When the Chester sisters saw that, they fell on their backs behind in shock. Somehow, even though Beato had become nothing more than a heart, it still kept beating, continuing to protect the barrier to the parlor. It was an immeasurably immense magical power. Impossible to measure. In other words, infinite and endless. <gasps> so, I don't know what's happening right now. Murdered. 
神の力だもの恐れながらあなた様の力ではベアトリーチェ様の無限の傷一つつけられませんそれはどういう意味よ影を知らずして光がないように有限を知らずして無限もまたなしベアトリーシェお嬢様の真の無限の力の前にあなた様の脆弱な魔力ではとてもとても及びません何よそれ<笑> The cruel witch stepped back in surprise It was more transparent than a lace curtain But Beato's form No, Beatrice's form was still standing there. Wondering about it, but Renove calling Beatrice by her title or name. What does that mean? Even after taking on this wretched appearance, she would not allow evil through that door. At that time, a shadow just as faint as Beatrice stood behind her. It was canon. Beatrice, Sama. Arigato gozaimashita. Kono go on wa. Wasre masen. はい、本当にありがとうございましたそしてベアドリーチェ様ももう大丈夫ですどうかお楽になさってください Rest in peace my beloved witch ババをベアトリーチェと呼ぶのよベアトリーチェは私の名前でしょ新しき黄金の魔女そして無限の魔女である私の名前のはずよブレードベアトリーチェ様の名を語るな恐れながらベアトリーチェ様の名は無限の魔女を冠せられるお方が名乗られるべきエヴァトリスは今や先代はあなた様を指すのであなた様を指すのであございますよ<笑>あとさらばなかどうせすぐに出会うさ新しき悪夢でな新しい夜の悪夢にて再びベアドリーチェ様のお供これで失礼いたしますそのサヴェニングキャネスファーム grew faint and he disappeared into thin air after watching him go Beatrice's form also grew faint and before disappearing he slumped over onto the floor then there was a splat a golden heart Which had been floating in midair, had lost its sparkle and become blood stained flesh and fallen to the ground. How、oh, frail it was! It was ragged and full of holes, but until just now, it had sparkled so much and had continued to beat forcefully that the heart still barely managed to beat. However, it was only a matter of time before it stopped. Beatrice. His form had become fragile and faint like incense smoke, lay on the floor, bitterly watching her own heart. There, the cruel witch could be seen. Beatrice no longer had the energy even to respond. No, in fact, 
It was doubtful whether the words of the cruel witch even reached her ears. The merciless witch poked Beatrice's heart with her fingernail. Beatrice had no words with which to respond to that provocation. However, instead of words, she returned a single expression. It looked insulting only to the cruel witch. Because she had gently curved her mouth and smiled. Footsteps were approaching that place. There was no way she could mistake them. That boisterous noise of shoes against the ground was the sound of Battler's footsteps. Batorak. え、<笑> I thought he was gonna say yes! Battler said that unbelievably bluntly. Taking a painful breath, Beatrice saw that and sneered at herself as though she should have expected it. <laughs> I don't know, how can Valor see what happened and still be so cold? But maybe it's because he knows Beatrice can go further. I don't know. The brutal witch raised her foot high. Below it was Beatrice's frail heart. ぐちゃっと潰れて、それでも無限が示せるってんなら示してごらんなさいよ。魔女は私よ。黄金の魔女ベアトリーチェは私なのよ。死ね。ああ、ダメだ。これ全然ダメだ。<笑> 